Hello everyone, it's Haley from AGK Artwork and in today's video, I will be unboxing another Powerful Packs subscription box. This video is not sponsored by Powerful Packs. I bought this subscription with my own money and I'll be giving you the full truth on my personal opinions with each product inside. Powerful Packs has a smaller and larger subscription box that you can choose from. The smaller one retails for $24.95 and the larger one retails for $35.95. I have seen a couple of the smaller boxes in the past and what's inside and I think it's a little bit underwhelming so I go ahead and pay the extra $11 just because I think what I can create with the larger box can be more cohesive and structured than what I can create with the smaller box. Without further ado, let's dive right into this April box. I'm so excited. I get so excited. Okay. This month we have green little frillies. I'm getting really excited. I see a bunch of colors. The first thing I see in here are these Stabilo pens. Premium fiber tip pen in brilliant colors. So yeah, I'm guessing these are just like similar to felt tip pens, but we will see in just a second. I'm about to open one up. We got a nice variety of colors. It looks like we got 20 different colors in this set. It is not double-sided, it's just single-sided. And yeah, I would say that looks like a standard felt tip pen. I'm not really familiar with pens in terms of like an art product. I don't typically use pens or markers, but I want this channel to be a learning experience for you and me. I want to learn about new things. I'm excited to try to make something look nice and artistic with a product that I have used to only think of as like a craft product, if that makes sense. So that would be really fun. Next up, we have a Princeton brush. It's a Princeton, why is it like a tongue twister? <laughs> it's a Princeton Select Angular Shader. <laughs> and it's three eighths of an inch. You can never go wrong with a brush, especially an angled brush. I don't have very many in my collection, so this is definitely a winner in my eyes. Next up, we have a Copic marker, I'm guessing. I've never owned a Copic marker before, which is really exciting now that I have one. Last month, I received my first ever Copic brand item and I absolutely loved it so I'm really excited to finally get a Copic marker. This looks like a felt slash brush pen. It's like you can manipulate it. It's a felt tip that you can manipulate if that makes sense. And this side is like an angular, kind of like a, you know, those thick jumbo sharpies. That is really awesome. I can't wait to try this out. The next little guy we got in this box is an adorable sticker of a pencil that says palatable. This has to be the cutest sticker I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of where I'm gonna put this because this needs to go on something. It's so cute. Next up, we've got this Uniball Signo broad gold pen. This is pretty cool. It's not like blowing my mind or anything with my first swatch, but it definitely is metallic and has a fun little sparkle to it. And lastly, in this box, we have a Bristol pad with 12, is it 12 sheets? Yes, 12 sheets of nine by 12 paper. Well, Bristol paper, but that is awesome. You can never have too much Bristol paper in your collection. I mean, I go through it really easily, especially if I'm trying to experiment. So that is really cool. Powerful Pack sent an email out to each customer with a link that leads to the card of the month because they are no longer making real cards, which I think is kind of a bummer, but you know, it is what it is, and I can still get the information and prompts on the link. So I'm going to go ahead and read that, and I'll be right back. When I first saw this paintbrush in the box, I was a little bit confused because I was like, what in the world am I going to use this paintbrush for? I mean, it's awesome that I got a paintbrush for my collection, but why was it in the box? After reading the information card online, I realized that... These Stabilo pens are actually water soluble. So there are one or two ways that they recommend using a paintbrush and water with these pens. Number one being 
you just draw on your paper and then use a little bit of water to lightly blend colors or whatever you want to do with the water. Or what I'm most likely going to do, take a porcelain dish or a plastic cap or something that's slippery and not absorbent, take this marker, just do a little scribble on it, add some water, and then use it that way, kind of similarly to watercolor almost. I'm interested to see how that works and how it's gonna look compared to watercolor because I just started getting into watercolor myself. There were four prompts. If I'm being honest, I think their prompts are a little bit lazy this month. Number one, flamingo. Number two, spring. Number three, donut. And number four, royal. The reason that I say that these prompts are not as elaborate as last month is because last month took a lot of thought. One of their prompts was song. I interpreted it as like you take a song and you get inspired by it. They also had pixel art which I think is maybe something that not a lot of artists have tried. Compared to this month they're pretty direct. They could have been like swamp animal or like you know what I mean something like that instead of telling you exactly what to do as of right now I'm leaning towards donuts because I've never actually drawn a donut since like seventh grade then I probably only did the aerial view you know it's like a circle and some icing but now I want to see if I can find a cool photo of like the side profile with like a bite taken out of it maybe some sprinkles you know what i mean like i think that'd be really cool with that being said let's get straight into the drawing doing the prompt donut because it brought back a lot of memories of donuts I used to draw as a kid. So let's talk about how I did this. Everything I used in this piece is what I received in the box other than a pencil eraser and I kind of cheated and used Copic white ink at the end just because I thought it would really tie in the piece. So first off I used these Stabilo fiber pens. So it says that these fiber pens have a 24 hour cap off time, which sounds kind of crazy and I don't really know if I believe that, but I don't really want to test that out because I do like these pens and I don't want to dry one out just for an experiment. <laughs> so these pens are odorless and water-based, which makes it really easy to manipulate kind of like watercolor. I tried both techniques that they proposed and I found that the ceramic like make your own paint kind of thing worked much better than the you draw on the paper and then add water. The pens dry pretty quickly when they're put on paper so when I did try to blend them out with water once I have put down the pen, it didn't work very well. It kind of just stayed in its spot and I was worried that I was gonna overwork the paper and that's never good luck. So I ended up just continuing with the ceramic bowl method. These pens did extremely well as watercolor mediums. I'm very surprised. I didn't think that was gonna happen. They are a little bit light. You have to use a lot of ink in order to get pigment out if you want the watercolor effect. But as regular markers, they're very vibrant and pigmented. So overall, I think these are a win and I'm definitely gonna keep playing around with these, which is 
crazy to me because I never thought I would be like a pen or marker type of girl. This Stabilo Pen 68 set of 20 retails for $29.50. Once I got a nice layer of watercolor-esque pen on the paper, I really loved how it looked and I wish I could have continued in that style, but the challenge was to use all of these products. So I knew I had to do something in order to make this all work together. So I ended up using a hatching technique to put in some more vibrant pops of color so that the stark black and the metallic gold wouldn't look too out of place. So that brings me to the Copic marker. I ended up only using the brush tip for this particular piece, but it worked amazingly. It was super dark, super opaque, went over everything. These are permanent and non-toxic, and you can also replace both of the nibs, which is pretty interesting. I don't know if that's common or not because I'm not really a marker girl, but that's pretty cool. Especially for the brush tip because I feel like if you overuse the brush tip, it can get kind of wonky. So that's cool that they have replacements so that you can have a fresh, nice, and straight nib. This Copic sketch marker in the shade 110 Special Black retails for $7.99. Next up, let's talk about the actual Bristol paper itself. Now, I had never heard of Seth Cole before because I usually use Strathmore, but I was pretty impressed with the results. It's not as sturdy as I thought it would be, but it took up the water really nicely. I thought it was not gonna be able to take as much water as I was putting down. I just kept layering and layering. I mean, there was a little bit of warping and I think it helped that I kept my drawing on the inner corners rather than doing the entire page. The one thing I will say about this Bristol paper is that it didn't, quite past the masking tape test, but I think it did good enough that I would still use masking tape on it. I love using masking tape to create borders of my colored pencil drawings and watercolor paintings. But as you might be able to see, there is a little bit of a rip. There's one down here and then there's one in the very corner. And that was a complete accident. I don't even know how that happened. I think it's pretty, unnoticeable. I don't think it's anything to be worried about. This Seth Cole 9x12 Bristol pad with 12 sheets retails for $10.99. Moving on to the Uni Ball Gel Impact Pen in the color gold. My first impressions, I wasn't that impressed, but it really is pretty cool when it hits the light. I'm not gonna lie. This pen is also really opaque. I had no issues with it whatsoever. It went onto the paper like butter. This retails for $3.59, which isn't like, you know, your standard cheap pen or anything, but for the quality, I definitely think it's worth it. Finally, we have our Princeton Artiste Select brush. Now, this brush, I also have very minimal complaints. It only shed one hair, which I just think it was because it was brand new, because after that one hair had shed, everything was intact. I was pretty rough with it, and it's still in good shape. I just think this is a well-rounded brush that you could use for a lot of different things. This brush retails for $7.99. The grand total for Palpal Pack's April Premier Box is $60.06. .06. Once again, I think that is a really good value. You're getting almost double the value of what you're actually paying, and I really enjoyed this box. I can 100% say that I enjoyed this box much better than I did last month. I just love that they included a product that is so versatile and you can do more than one thing. Like it's not just a pen, you can make it watercolor if you want, you know what I mean? As for my finished piece, there is something I'm contemplating doing. I'm thinking about possibly taking these white borders, making them pink with the watercolor version of the marker to resemble the donut icing and then adding some sprinkles around the border. I think it'd be really cute and could possibly tie in the whole paper together, but here are the cons. One, it could make the piece look a little more cluttered, and two, 
Like I said, there are two little, or actually three little places that have rips in the paper and that might draw extra attention depending on how the watercolor pen medium reacts to the distressed paper. Tell me in the comments below, should I add pink icing with sprinkles on the outside or should I just leave it like this? If I do end up putting the pink icing and sprinkles around the border, I will definitely show you the final, final piece in my next Powerful Packs unboxing video. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you'd like to see me do next. Thanks for watching. Bye.